Hey, so today uh, I'll be installing the JMG seats that we got. These are the 20 inch captain's chairs and uh, we're gonna put an aisle down the middle so they'll be on either side of the van there. <clears throat> the first step is actually to get all the fuel out of your, your uh, tank as you can. So we drove around and got down to where we only had a couple of gallons left in the tank just because we're gonna be lowering the fuel tank a little bit and less weight there the better. So that was step one. Um, step two is to get the chairs inside the van on the plates. I just uh, just hand threaded a couple of bolts so that the base doesn't pivot around and it's separate from the actual uh, base that goes to the floor here. That way you can practice with uh, swiveling the chairs, positioning them without the chair moving independently of the, the base there. And once you've got it where you want it, um, you can mark it off here and the next Next thing after that is to go underneath and make sure that nothing's in the way of where it's going to bolt. Uh, there are these frame brackets here that these will go up under the frame and bolt to this plate right here. Uh, and so there's also cross members to watch out for. And there are these little, little marks here. Uh, it's hard to see on the camera there. You'll see them all the way across. That's where the cross members are. Uh, the guys at GMG, really nice, by the way, um, very helpful. They were saying, if you look at these as guides, you can tell where the cross members are in order to avoid those. That's where the robots clamped onto when they were doing the spot welds on the bottom. So good reference marks there. Um, planning is, it seems like <laughs> probably 90% of the job or maybe 75% of the job. Um, I say that because you've got to make sure the chairs are going to do what you want them to do and not get in the way. Uh, we're going to actually... We want these to be able to pivot 180 to face backwards here um, without hitting the wall over there. And because we got the, the swivel bases, the adjustable bases, you can move the chair frontwards and backwards um, and uh, and you can you know, straighten the seat up so that when you're turning it against that wall, you can get it out of the way so that it can pivot all the way around and then recline it backwards. So, <clears throat> and we're, we're positioning these um, specifically so that we can put a porta potty right here um, when this seat's straightened up, it makes kind of a nice little, um, almost a room right there. And we'll be putting a, a curtain that hangs from the ceiling here to go around that for some privacy. And then back here will be the Moab bed that will end around, about where that window frame is. We're gonna have windows installed here too, but the, the bed will end right about there and go that way. So um, we wanna have room behind the chair to store some things and then room up here for a porta potty as needed. And uh, anyway, that was kind of the, the overall look at what we're going to be doing. Um, I'll get more video here as we get underneath and show what it looks like underneath. Uh, you do have to have a uh, special uh, Torx, an e-Torx, I think they call it. Uh, I've never had a, a socket like this. Um, I've always, I've had Torx sockets, but this one is actually, it's hard to see there, but this is an E14 and it will go, <clears throat> it will be used to lower the the gas tank, the diesel tank right there. There's, these are E14s under there. And so we've got a, um, a jack here and a couple of jack stands on a board so that we can lower the tank. Just They say you only have to lower it a few inches um, and then we'll support it with that board so that it's not just the, the jack holding it up. And that'll let us um, get up under there to thread the hardware onto the bottom side. Okay, so the tank's been lowered um, a few inches got it blocked up up there and really I've got its tub sitting down here. It works great. The tank was able to come down more at this end and rest on this tub. And uh, the brackets are just kind of sitting here on this, on the initial wood that I used to lower it down. So the first uh, bracket I'm going to install is going to straddle the frame right about here, right where this dark area is actually. So it'll, it'll go up there like that. Um, there are some lines on the other side of the frame that I'm gonna have to detach from the frame, get away from there so that I can put the bracket on. Probably just that one wrapped line. It's got some plastic clips that clip it into the frame. So that will come out. Um, and uh, Next step is to pre-drill, go up top and uh, where the seat base is, make sure it's very straight, oriented just right and drill a couple of real small holes just to just to cut a mark where the holes are going to be come down here make sure i'm not going to run into anything um, and then widen those holes to the proper size and then we'll paint those so they don't rust and then it's just a matter of bolting the hardware together okay sorry i was actually off on the frame members so i was looking at those um 
the uh, bracket's actually going to go over the frame, and it's going to be um, rearward of this cross member, uh, just a couple of inches, a uh, few inches. <clears throat> just for reference point, there's the filler for the fuel. You get the first cross member, second cross member, and then my pilot holes right here. So <clears throat> um, the little plastic clip over here that holds this um, wire harness just pops right out. And then you can uh, lower the tank about, huh, what's that, five inches, something like that. And it'll let you get the bracket up in here. It'll wiggle under the, uh, if I get a better shot here, wiggle under the lines that are over here, if that's visible. Um, anyway, I'll fit like that. So um, I did have originally, when I positioned the seats, um, the uh, where I had them setting was a, this would be right about here, but just because there's some, um, put this down real quick here. There's some uneven areas right here. I wanted this bracket to fit flush uh, so that it fit flush on the frame here. So that means I had to come forward a little bit about right there, which puts it about roughly four inches from the middle of the cross member to the hole. Um, so rather than trying to Sorry, that looks probably crazy on video. I'm underneath here trying to keep the camera straight. Probably not doing a good job. Uh, but anyway, I drilled the first hole from underneath here because I had this bracket here uh, perfectly placed and it was kind of my reference point. So I drilled this and then on top, um, I'll show you what we did there. I used the other bracket to mark where the other hole is going to go and I'll drill it from the, from the top. So using a uh, square to keep the bracket here, hopefully in line with the frame. See, there's my pilot hole right there. Um, I'll use this to mark, you know, we'll punch it right there and then drill in there. And hopefully in the bottom side, the bracket will line up perfectly unless the frame is not quite square with the van. I don't know that yet. I mean that it is, so this is marked properly here. But as you can see, um, this is where the chair was, this, and uh, it's not far off. I moved the chair out of the way here, but this corner was right in here. Um, it's going to be pretty close to where I had it originally, not too bad. Okay, that worked. Uh, this hole right here um, lines up, I mean, the bracket lines up with the other hole. It's hard to see. I can't do it with, uh, with the uh, camera one hand, but you can see the um, hole right through there. Hurry, right, it's hard to focus on it. Anyway, right there. So yeah, it did line up perfectly. So we're good to go there. Now it's just time to widen the holes to the proper size and uh, then paint them. So I got the holes um, opened up to just a little over a half inch. Uh, I used a half inch drill bit and then wallowed them out just a hair so the bolt wouldn't rub and knock off the rust paint uh, as I put the bolt through. I haven't painted them yet. Um, I went ahead and just, I want I've decided to go ahead and paint the holes after I've got them all drilled. So I put the seat a base over the holes that are drilled. Dropped in a couple of those bolts down there, you see, um, on the on the end there. Um, the seat overall is roughly where I wanted it. It's a little closer to the wall, but the chair does clear the wall when I swivel the chair all the way around, so that's fine. Actually give us a little bit wider aisle that way. So the next step is to come up and mark where the holes are going to be for the front side of the plate. Um, to kind of see here but this plate here has holes along it so we'll drill a couple of holes for the plates that are going to mount on the bottom side of that once those are all drilled um, we test fit everything that's when we'll paint the holes wait for it to dry and then uh, just bolt it together so i moved the chair off the base since it's just in the way and there's no need for the chair to be on there anymore since i know it's going to be where i want it to be so at this point, uh, we'll figure out which of these holes we're going to use, if maybe all of them. Um, I've got to look underneath and see what is not in the way. <laughs> and then uh, once I make sure everything is cleared by a lot of measuring, then we'll start drilling those holes. Ah, oh, the fun task of using Rust-Oleum on all the exposed metal from the holes that I drilled. So very important though. <laughs> One of those things that you don't want to forget so that you don't have rust creeping in. I'll go underneath and ensure that looks good, but uh, we'll keep doing those anyway.
be back in a minute. Okay, while the uh, Rust-Oleum is drying on the other side, um, I'm just working on the passenger side, which is a lot easier. Uh, we're gonna be installing this bracket over the frame rail right here by the exhaust hanger. Um, gonna be just on this side of it, kind of like so. Again, trying to keep it on the flat part, not up here on the edge, but as close as we can get to the cross member without it being on its side and that makes it flat here against the frame. So we're going to drill um, holes upward. I'll start with the one here on the outside of the van and uh, then we'll start measuring everything else based on that. Uh, just a quick tip here. I highly recommend using the uh, step bit um, so that it'll gradually widen the hole to half inch. Um, makes it go a lot faster. And then at the, when it's after the half inch mark, um, if you have one that goes a little bit larger, like 9 16 that would be great. Keep the bolt from rubbing off any rust oil you paint on the hole. Um, if you don't have that, you can get you know, like a grinding type bit like this just to widen it a little bit. Okay, so I uh, got those holes opened up, the proper mount, put the plate here, just dropped in these just to hold it in place here. And I'll go underneath and uh, verify that the bracket does indeed fit. That's great. So, all right, so now it's time to uh, find the front points that we're gonna drill, which will be up in here somewhere. Um, this is gonna be a little in the way, this heat shield from the exhaust pipe. So we'll have to see what we can do with that. Okay, so some of the bolts for the front of the passenger plate are going to come down right above this heat shield, and uh, there are some little retaining, uh, I don't know what you call these things, little clips. Once you get them started with like needle nose pliers or a screwdriver, they do unscrew uh, like that. And so it, if you apply much pressure at all, though, they won't come off. They'll skip threads, so you kind of have to gently pull and twist. And the idea is, um, once this is down out of the way, I should be able to get up in here from the other side, probably, to be able to uh, attach the backing plates and hardware, so. All right, with the uh, base plates mounted, um, after the paint dried on all the holes, at this point I uh, rolled the um, this floor we have, just a foam mat, it's kind of temporary. Um, pulled that back over, measured, off of some reference points to figure out exactly where the squares were and then just cut those holes out. So it makes a pretty nice recessed finish there. Again, this is kind of a temporary floor. We'll eventually probably use it as a template for uh, some nicer floors, but it's a rug, a bed rug it's called. Uh, it wasn't real expensive. It was less than $200, I think. Um, and it gives us nice surface for for walking on and for we haul stuff in the back of the van a lot of times. So it's, it's a good, somewhat non-skid surface. And it's got uh, little pockets here for the D-rings um, to come through. <clears throat> anyway, um, get the seats bolted up now with the hardware. There's uh, there's two different lengths of bolts. Um, we've got, let me see if I can get a couple of other examples. Yeah, these are the longer ones. Um, their shorter bolts go in the front. There we go. <clears throat> so you can see there's a little bit different height. The longer ones will go in the back. If you notice, these holes are more recessed in the back than they are the front. Uh, so those will go in the back, and the, these will go in the front holes here. Okay, so just a tip here. When you put the seat on the plate, um, this middle rear bolt right here is a great one to uh, start with. Once you get it in, uh, the other ones will line up easier. Um, I've, I just got them hand threaded in right now, but they thread in really, really nicely. Uh, I've got three in the back and two in the front. There are more holes in the plate than there are holes in the base that match up. I think it's for probably different base plate options and things. So we'll tighten those down. One more tip here is uh, don't forget you can rotate. If you have the swivel base, you can swivel these out of the way to allow more room for the socket to reach. Otherwise, it will hit this rail right here. Uh, it's a 16 millimeter bolt head. So you may have a crescent or a uh, open end wrench that would fit in there, uh, but a socket is going to require you to probably rotate the seat. 
All right, and with that, the seats are installed. Uh, they're really solid. They look great. Uh, they're comfortable. Really turned out well. Uh, all I've got left to do is um, bolt the uh, fuel tank back up underneath. That's just reversing what we did to begin with, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, the only thing that I would change, or I'm going to, I'm going to change, is uh, right here. So this lever, um, this is the lever that you pull to rotate the seats. I've already lost the uh, rubber cap that's on there, like that. They, uh, they aren't really glued on, um, and they come off pretty easily. So I'd probably put some silicone or something in there to keep that on. The other thing is right here, there's a very sharp edge. Uh, it's, it's a 90 degree angle. And when you pull this lever back, your hand can catch on that. Uh, and it can, so if you're, if you're up on top, you reach back, it's gonna scrape the side of your hand pretty bad. So I'm probably, I don't know what that's for. It looks like it has a cable guide or something. I don't know that this is even necessary, but it's welded on. So what I'm gonna do is, is grind off the corner here so it's rounded. Um, that way when you pull back, you don't rake your hand on that. Other than that though, uh, they're fantastic. They're really heavy duty seats, very heavy. <laughs> I think the shipment was 300 pounds um, and you can definitely feel it when you're lifting the chairs into the van and positioning them. Uh, but I like that, it's a really solid setup. Um, I love how they, they swivel and go back and forth, really cool. So here's just another view of what they look like, how much room there is on the side. So it's got probably, I don't know, about that much. <laughs> about four inches probably from the wall. Allow for some paneling to be there and still allow the seat to swivel. Plenty of room to walk down the aisle. Plenty of room to go out the front side here. And uh, plenty of room to go through that way. So I think they're in a really good position. Um, just for reference, uh, where I've got mine is 27 and uh, 27 and a half inches from the from the uh, bottom of this plate here to the front of the base plate here, uh, and about six and three quarter inches from that wall to the edge of the base plate. So that's to give you a reference point for where we installed them. Um, you may need to do something different to put it on your setup. Um, and then this one is about two and a half inches from the edge of the van. Probably more like uh, two and three quarter inches uh, to the edge of the base plate. Same distance from the back of the seat here, measuring from this this part of the wall out. <clears throat> and that is about it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully, it's helpful for someone.